Hey everyone, welcome to another video on building message-driven systems. Today we're taking a look at how do we read from the dead letter queue on Azure Service Bus. So I'm going to jump over to Visual Studio and we're going to take a look at the code that we left off with last time and then add in reading from us to the dead letter queue. Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio and we can see the code that we left off with before. Uh, at the top we write out that we're starting our demo. We have our variables for connection string, uh, topic name, subscription. Obviously these things will be read from configuration in a proper system, but now we're just hard coding them because we're just running uh, these examples in our static main. Uh, I have this method for clearing the subscription. Um, I mentioned this before, we will cover the implementation of that, but don't worry about it for now. All we need to know is that every time we start this demo, this is gonna make our subscription totally empty. So nothing in the dead letter queue, no active messages. So we connect to our topic. We send 10 messages and then we write to our console that we sent 10 messages. And then we register our subscription client, set some handler options, making sure that it doesn't auto complete for us, doesn't auto renew our message locks. And then we register our message handler, which is this message handler method here. And when we receive that, um, all that's going to do is just write uh, that we've received the message and dead lettered it. And then we're going to write that to the dead letter queue. Okay. So we're running the application, just to remind ourselves what that kind of looks like. So we're starting our Azure Service Bus demo, sent 10 messages, out of the 10 messages being kind of received and then we dead letter them. So now if I jump over to the uh, Azure portal, we can see that we've got no active messages and 10 messages left in the dead letter queue. So we'll come back, we'll kill our application, go back to Visual Studio. Uh, so we're successfully dead lettering our messages. And so now we need to uh, find a way to connect to that dead letter queue and read those. Um, and so first, the first thing I'm going to show you is um, the, because the dead letter queue is, is not a subscription and not a regular queue, we need a different type of thing to be able to read from it. What we actually use uh, is what's called the message, uh, message receiver. It was our DLQ message receiver. So this is like a queue client or a subscription client. Um, but message receiver, so take a look. Uh, that takes in very similar things um, to the the other constructors for subscription client and, and uh, queue client. It takes in a connection string, which we've got, and then it takes in an entity path. Uh, and so what we need to get is the entity path for our dead letter queue. Uh, and so what we're going to call that is our um, DL, DLQ entity path. So we need to make that variable. Okay, so, uh, so what we're going to use is I'm going to get us our subscription path. And we're going to use this thing that comes with uh, the service bus library, entity name helper. And we're going to format a subscription path. And for that, we need our topic and our subscription name. And then we can use that to work out our dead letter queue entity path. Make sure I get the spelling right. And we can do entity name helper format dead letter path, and then we pass in our subscription path. That's why we needed to make that. So we this brings the topic and subscription name together. So it's like the topic name slash subscriptions slash the subscription name. Um, or if it's just a queue, you just use the queue name. So you wouldn't need this line at all for the queue. Um, and then the, the dead letter entity path um, basically takes whatever it was, the queue name or that subscription path, and then puts a slash dollar dead letter queue uh, at the end. But rather than you hard coding any of that stuff, just use the entity name, entity name helper, and then I'll make sure that it gets, gets you the right entity name in the right format. And so now we've connected a message receiver to our dead letter queue. We need to uh, start receiving messages. We kind of want to do it the way we did before. Um, and so we're going to make some message handler options. These are our DLQ options. And for that, we need to pass it the exception handler. We're going to reuse the same method. So it'll just print out an exception happened, um, kind of what we would do before. We want to make sure that we don't auto complete our mess messages. We want to make sure that we're doing that kind of explicitly. If you can make sure in your application that your message handler will never complete without an exception, if something goes wrong and you've not processed the message, you can probably skip that step and just have auto complete to true. And then you don't need to worry about it. I personally like to have it really explicit. And for the demos, I'm going to make sure that we have it explicit because we want to be able to, to change whether we're uh, completing or, or abandoning or dead lettering messages. We want to control that stuff ourselves. So when we're doing that, we set auto complete to false. Uh, and so then we say message receiver, uh, we're going to register a message handler, the same as we did before. And so now we need a message handler. So I'm going to call that DLQ message handler. Uh, and then we can pass in our dead letter queue options. 
And so to make that DLQ message handler, just for, uh, for quickness, I'm gonna grab our old message handler that did regular messages and copy and paste it as DLQ message handler. And then what I'm gonna do is make sure that down here, we do DLQ message received. I'm not gonna say I've delivered it yet. And then I need to be able to, um, to complete the message. So I need to be able to get access to the message receiver here, the dead letter queue message receiver. So what I'm gonna quickly do is grab that definition from here uh, and then move it up to the top next to the one where we have for our subscription client. Again, this is private static here. It's only, it's only static because I'm in the static main because I'm doing this as a demo just where the application launches. If you're in a proper class that had this, uh, then it'll probably just be an instance variable. So it's only static because we're doing these demos in, in our main method. Um, and so now down here, message receiver um, dot complete, exactly the same way we did before, message system properties lock token is what we pass in. And so now I'm just gonna, this isn't a great name, so I'm just gonna do refactory name and call this DLQ message receiver, just to make it very clear that this is specifically receiving dead letter queue messages. Great. So let's see what happens now. We'll run the application, see what happens. Starting a demo, sending 10 messages. We're receiving dead letter. Perfect. So we received the dead letter, received and dead lettered message one and two. Then we received from the dead letter, we received message one. Uh, and so we're able now, like that's all we need. We're able to receive stuff from the dead letter queue. Um, I'm just going to show some other things though, just to, to help you kind of more clearly understand what happens. Um, normally, if you abandon messages, from uh, from a regular topic, you'll get given them again. And if I jump back to the subscription, uh, you can see here the max delivery count. This is how many times Service Bus will attempt to give you something from a message, uh, a message from a, a subscription or a queue. Uh, we'll see whether the did letter queue kind of obeys that the same way. So we'll start this out. Okay, so I don't think it does because we're being given this message a lot more than 10 times. Um, and so that's something to, to note nothing on the dead letter queue will be removed from the dead letter queue by service bus until you complete it. It won't time out. It won't, uh, it won't like fail a maximum delivery count, anything like that. You have to complete a message if you want it removed from service bus, uh, from a dead letter queue on service bus. In fact, the other potential option that you have on message receipt is to dead letter a message. You can't do that on the dead letter queue either. If you try and dead letter a message uh, that's already on the dead letter queue, if you do that from your message handler, uh, you just get exceptions. It doesn't work. So if you want to remove something, you have to uh, you have to complete it. Um, while we're talking about the kind of the delivery count, um, I'm going to go back to abandoning this. Uh, I'm going to see what happens with our delivery count. So remember, Service Bus is able to tell us uh, how many times it's tried to deliver us a message. That's in message system properties delivery count. Uh, and so let's run this now. Remember, this is our service bus is, no, sorry, our client now is abandoning all the messages it receives on the dead letter queue. So we're gonna keep getting them lots of times. Uh, as we do that, we see that it doesn't actually increment the delivery count. That's why there's gonna be no uh, maximum delivery count limit when we're on the service bus. Uh, so they all came back as one. What we will find actually is that that delivery count always relates uh, to what happens um, when we're receiving from the proper subscription or the proper queue. Uh, so if I change our normal receiver uh, to say, if uh, our delivery count is less than five, um, then abandon the message, All right? So that's gonna put it kind of back on to be received again. Uh, else, we're gonna dead letter it and run that application now. What we're gonna see is all those messages that we receive on the dead letter queue we're gonna abandon them, like we're gonna abandon a message five times and then dead, dead letter it. When we receive it on the dead letter queue, it shows us five. So that message count always shows how many times did it get delivered on the primary uh, kind of receiver. And so that's basically it. Um, I'll quickly summarize again. Uh, we've got our connection string and our topic name and subscription name, uh, or you could do it with a queue name. We send our message to the topic, we're receiving them, uh, and then we eventually send them to the dead letter queue uh, you can either do that by having um, by by exceeding the maximum delivery count, so having it be delivered and fail more times than than the maximum delivery count, or you can just immediately dead letter it if you if you can tell through code that you won't be able to process something. And then we subscribe uh, to our dead letter queue. So first of all, we need to get our subscription 
uh, path, our single string that represents the subscription. If you're just using a queue, that'd just be the queue name. Uh, and then we use entity name helper format dead letter path and we give it our entity name and that will tell us the dead letter path. And then we can use a message receiver the same way we do with a subscription client or a queue client, use a message receiver to register a message handler for those messages. And then we have to make sure we complete those messages um, because they'll never get removed uh, if we don't complete them. Uh, and so that's it. That's simply how you uh, how you can receive from the, uh, the dead letter queue on Azure Service Bus. Um, so if you liked that video, if you found it helpful, uh, please hit me a like. Um, if you want to subscribe and, and register for post notifications so you get to see the rest of my videos and you know after a service bus, there may be event hubs or, or Kafka or Solus or kind of other, other kind of messaging systems. Uh, and then if you want to kind of reach out, drop me a comment below um, or hit me up on social media. But thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Bye.